reading to you from Proverbs 27, 27 Proverbs and the first chapter. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. <clears throat> Good evening, my dear listening friends. Again, this evangelist Cecil Moe. And as you know, I'm a converted alcoholic. Gave my heart to Christ over 55 years ago. One year later, God called me to preach. And I've been sharing Christ ever since. Well, this month, my wife and I will be celebrating our 64th wedding anniversary. Can you believe that? My stars in the morning, that's a long time. But it's been good because we've been walking with Jesus this last 55 years. Well, listen, I'll be with you for a half an hour. Won't you just kick off your slippers, sit back and relax, and pour you a great big old cup of coffee or a glass of iced tea. Let's see what the Lord has for us, okay? If you have your Bibles with you, turn with me to 1 Thessalonians and the 4th chapter. Let's begin reading with the 13th verse. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve, as so do the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring him with those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not precede the, those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, uh, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. We've labeled this message, Caught Away. Well, <clears throat> what is the next great prophetic event? Many prophecies were fulfilled in the birth of Jesus. And many prophecies were filled, fulfilled in Christ's death and resurrection. Now, the next great prophetic event is Christ's return. What will happen when Christ returns? Well, we read again. But do not, we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve, as so do the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. Well, the dead in Christ will rise first. You say, now what is this you're talking about, the dead in Christ shall rise first? Well, there's been... Millions of people have died before this day who knew Jesus as Savior. Now they're dead. They're in a grave. But they will be the first to bring forth from the grave. Those who died first will be there. The living believers are to be caught away, which is if could be you and me, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus, we shall always 
be with the Lord. Friends, we have heartaches on this earth. We have discouragements. We have all kinds of things. Life isn't fair, beloved, I'll tell you for sure. But when we are raptured and caught up, hey, you don't like to fly? You're afraid of high places? You won't. You won't. When he calls and we start going up there, you won't be a bit afraid. My stars, we'll be see a lot of things. Now, <clears throat> Three questions are raised by the eminency of Christ's return. How shall we live in the light of the countdown? Well, each day brings us closer to Christ's return. Now, the prophetic clock never stops. From day one, it never stops. Time's relentless marches brings us urgency to life. Now, the countdown of life keeps reminding us of the shortness of time. You know, I'm 85, but my stars are more, and that's not old at all. No, it's not old. Well, dreams realized or dashed keep us aware of the importance of seizing opportunities. You know, God puts things in our way, and we're sometimes too stupid to reach out and take them. He gives them to us, but we, you know, well, God wants to bless you today more than you want to be blessed. Oh, yes. You know, a lot of people think God's sitting up there in heaven with a big old ball bat. And every time you and I make a mistake, he wants to whack us one. That's not true. Friends, why does he say if we sin, if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us all our sins. Oh, I know it's hard to believe when the word and it seems like, dear friends, and you know it's true. It seems like the people in our government are corrupt and crooked. They don't pay taxes. President will care. He as long as they're communist and long as they got a, a little Muslim in them, he's gonna be all right. But, beloved, I'm telling you, they're not going to get away with it. Well, they say he may destroy our earth. I mean, the uh, the government may just destroy us financially and everyone. Probably will. Could happen. But we've got Jesus, and they don't have nothing. Did I say nothing? If you, then nothing, nothing. No, they don't have anything. We have Jesus. We have the one that went to the cross of Calvary. Oh, don't you remember out in the Garden of Gethsemane? And he was knowing he was facing the cross. And of course he was upset about it. And uh, he went out to pray. And he looked and even his followers, his disciples were sound asleep. He said, can't you just stay awake a little while longer? Oh, friends, I tell you. Then he said, not my will, but thy will be done. Hey, that's a hard one to say, my dear friends. I said it a few years ago in California when I was had that lung tumor, and I thought I was dying that night. And I was laying there praying, and I thought, my, I don't want to leave my wife and kids. I just was called to preach about a year ago, and here I am dying. But then I said, nevertheless, that will be done. And you know what? Now you say you're wacky, see, so no. There was a light, a blue, soft light at the bottom of my bed, and I went to sleep, fully expecting to wake up in glory. And you know what? Didn't happen. I woke up hearing Robin sing. Well, the countdown to Christ's return is made evident by signs all about us. And I read in Matthew 24, and you will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not frightened, for those things must take place. But that is not yet the end. For nations shall rise against nations, and kingdom against kingdom. In various places there will be famine and earthquakes. Well, another sign is the day of Noah. Increased iniquity in an affluent time, and I read in Matthew 24, For the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. 
For in those days which were before, through the flood, they were eating and drinking, and they were marrying and giving into marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they did not understand until the flood come and took them all away. So shall the coming of the Son of Man. Well, we know he's coming, dear friends. We certainly do know he's coming. Well, what are we doing about it? Well, how shall we live in light of the catching away? We which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Verse 17. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always. Did you know what always means? That means for always be with the Lord. Oh, my friends. Now, if you're lost, this should trouble you. Oh, boy. This should trouble you a lot. If you don't know Jesus, this should bother you. Now, the one who died and rose again will come again. Now, believers alive at that time will escape death. Death has taken its toll through the centuries. And we've all stood by the grave of loved ones. A better day is coming. And a day will be caught, a day, caught away. Our plans then ought to transcend our brief stay on earth. Laying up treasures here should not have priority. We ought to live every day with Christ coming in mind. And I read in 1 John 2.28, And now, little children, abide in him so that when he appears, he may have confidence and not shrink away from hair and shame. Friends, listen. I told this story a long time ago, but years and years ago, I was having a terrible problem with alcohol. And it was Memorial Day, and my brother-in-law and his wife and uh, their little girl and my wife and I and our little boy were going up to Upper Eight Mile Crossing to camp out over the holiday. Well, when we got into the Dow, we lived in Portland. When we got in the Dow's, I said, you know what, I've got to put some flowers on my parents' grave. I'd never been to the graves since Mom and Dad and Patty died, only when they were buried. So I went and bought a big bouquet of flowers, and I went out there, and the cemetery had grown so much, I had to go find out where where they were laid. I found the place, and I got out of the car, and I went over there, and I lay, I knelt down there in the, in the, in the grass, and I spread the flowers out. And all of a sudden, it was like I heard my dear sweet mother's voice. Cecil, look at you, son. Look at you. You're drinking. God never intended for you to do that. You know we never taught you that in our lifetime. And you know what, friends? I broke down, and I had nearly had a nervous breakdown. I cried, and I cried, and I cried till I couldn't cry no more. My wife and no one knew what was going on. Well, <clears throat> so we got in the car and drove off. and That was the most miserable weekend I ever spent in my life, though I drank trying to, trying to cover up my heartache. I, I couldn't. Beloved, listen to me. If you're an alcoholic or you're married to an alcoholic or you know an alcoholic, see, that's what they try to do. They try to drown their sorrows. But you know what it does when you drink? It multiplies your sorrows. Oh, you don't get, you can't get peace when you're drinking. And, and, you know, I use God's name in vain all the time. I even told dirty stories about my Savior. But, oh, dear friends, it's under the blood now. I don't have to worry about it. It's under the blood. Well... Our plans in order to transcend our briefs to here on earth. Listen, we need to not lay up treasures here on earth. We ought to live daily in Christ coming in mind. Now, we shall live in light of the coming judgment. Now, listen, friends. The judgment seat of Christ follows the rapture. Now, listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. We must all appear 
before the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Think about that, beloved. Think about that. What have you done that you don't want the Lord to talk about? Well, don't do things you don't want the Lord to talk about. Our thoughts. Oh, friends, sometimes we get some bad thoughts, and you know it, and I know it. Sometimes we think bad things, and we shouldn't. But you know that's the devil trying to jam the airways. He doesn't want you not to live a good life. He wants you not to take the broad road that leads into destruction. I used to think the bars was the most beautiful place. The lights would be dim so you wouldn't see your sin. And you'd think, oh, I'm having a good time. And I used to get on the organ and the piano. And I would put a lampshade on my head and I'd put on a show I was always entertaining people. You know why? Because I was so unhappy myself. You know, I could hardly talk without breaking down with tears. I was so miserable. See, I knew that I was wrong. He that knoweth do, to knoweth do good and do it not, doeth it not, is it sin. I knew what I was doing was wrong, but I didn't know what to do about it. Now, the day I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, let me tell you what happened. I lit a cigarette. I was never so convicted of anything in my life. Here I had just invited Christ into my heart, and now I'm lit, lighting up a filthy cigarette that was taking my life, and as I know, you know, I'm on auction today, 55 years later. Well, so I started praying about it. I said, Lord, I, I'm sure that I shouldn't smoke. And it's sure not a good testimony. I've seen people start out and sit out in front of the church and smoke cigarettes. What a, what a terrible thing to do. And the money. I, you know, when I was smoking, cigarettes cost 25 cents a pack. They tell me they cost 3 to $5 a package. Just look at God's money that you're throwing away. Look at the people that you could missionaries and, and oh, I don't want to get into that. But I'll tell you right now, one day in desperation, I was sitting there reading the Bible and I was smoking a cigarette. And all of a sudden, a ash dropped in the Bible. It felt just like I reached up and slapped God. It was the most terrible feeling. And I said, oh God, I can't go on this way. And I had the feeling that if I wouldn't quit smoking, that God was going to take me out. I really was that convicted, I'm telling you. The next, and I told him that night, with his help, I'd quit. The next morning, the first thing I thought of was a cigarette. But I, I knew I'd made a, a deal with the Lord. So I ate breakfast and I went to work. It was a nasty, rainy, terrible, cold, miserable day in Seattle. And I never went home for noon ever for lunch. But this day I went home for lunch. I walked in the house and I walked into the kitchen. Just between the kitchen and living room was a, a, a path with her. And I said, oh, God, i got to have a cigarette. I can't go on, God. I can't go on. This verse of Scripture came across my mind. I will not suffer you more than what you can bear, but with it I'll offer an escape. You know what? I claim that, and I've never, ever, ever smoked again. To God be the glory and praise. So if you're hooked on tobacco, it'll work. It'll work. You ask him. But you got to be willing to surrender. And I'm going to tell you something else that'll shock you, and you may not think it's very funny, and it's not funny, but, you know, God never called me to preach until I gave up those cigarettes. You're going to say, you mean to tell me, Cecil, that if preachers smoke, they're not called of God? I never said that one thing. I said he never called me to preach until I quit smoking. Well, anyway, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, Christians must give an account for their service for Christ. Romans fourteen twelve. So then each one of us shall give an account of himself to God. 
Now, rewards await those who have served Christ faithfully. That's for sure. Now, Peter challenges us all. Everything we see will perish. Second Peter 3.11 And let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Well, how will our Lord judge our service from him? Does your future hold rewards or regrets? Hey, there's still time to surrender your life to Christ. You can begin to lay up rewards today. I beg of you, don't delay. You may soon be caught away. Friends, Jesus Christ is coming again. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, I know they make fun. They laugh. They say, well, Paul said that. That's all right. He's coming. When they predicted his his uh, virgin birth in a, in a barn way back in the Old Testament, he sure did. All these things have come to pass. Only thing we're waiting for now is a rapture. I'm begging you, are you ready? If you are not and you have a tugging at your heart right now, I urge you to bow your head with me and don't you dare pray this prayer unless you mean it. And here's how it goes. Kind Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I confess that I'm a hell-bound, lost sinner. And I don't want to go to hell. And so with that, I'm opening my heart and receiving you as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to get on the phone and call 303-471-8534. I will not use your name on the air. I will not embarrass you. I'll not sit down and write and ask you for any money. And I don't care where you go to church. I'm only concerned where you spend eternity. Beloved, this well may be the last time the Holy Spirit of God will tug at your heart. Don't send away your day of grace. Today he stands with outstretched arms saying, Come unto me all ye labor and heavy laden. He loves you. I love you, but more than that, Jesus loves you. I'm waiting for your call. 303-471-8534.
Well, friends, for the past half hour, your host has been Evangelist Cecil Moe. Just remember, he's coming back. Oh, yes, he is. When is he coming back? I don't know. God the Father is the only one knows, but he knows. And when that time comes, there will be a thief in the night, and you won't have time to repent. So I suggest you repent while there's still time. Friends, you pray for my wife and I. Our health is getting a little shaky now and then. Oh, but uh, we're losing weight again. We're doing fine so far. Keep us in your prayers. Oh, I love to be on the broadcast. I believe I love to talk to people about Jesus. And if you would like to talk to me, you can call me day or night, 303-471-8534. There's never no charge for my ministry. I do it because God called me to it and because I love to tell people about Christ. Well, until this time next Sunday night, I want you to be good to your neighbors. Stay sweet. Keep looking up for this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Jesus is coming real soon. Good night and may God bless you real, real good.